You train your entire life and you only know one thing. All you do is eat, sleep, and breathe hockey. So what happens when that dream is crushed and in comes the realization that you need to find a new focus? This is the story of Daryl Levy. From the day I started hockey, it was a battle to prove that I belong in the sport. You spend your whole life working for one goal. That's all you know. That's all you think about. They said to me, you know, we're, we're gonna let you go. It just killed me. I was, I just said, you know what? I'm done, I got nothing left. I got nothing left. I didn't know what's next. Hockey for me has been a big part of my life, uh, pretty much all of my life. My dream's always been to play in the National Hockey League. I tore my TFC and my ulna, and I've been playing with it for years and finally got to a point where I needed surgery, so I had surgery. I got a call from Anaheim System to go play in Syracuse. I'm like, wait a second, how am I gonna do this? So obviously I cut off my cast and you know, I, when you wanna do something your whole life, you, you know, it doesn't matter, uh, do it over and over again. Uh, I would've cut it off again now today to try and do my dream. So um, I went and played, it was tough. I battled through it. Um, my hand would swell up to the point where like my nails would pretty much pop off my hand. Once I got released from Syracuse, I remember waiting to figure out what team I was going for next, and I went back to my gym where I trained, and I'm doing my warm-up, and doing my warm-up, and I get down to do a lunge and twist, and like the tears just start flowing, and kind of knew that that's, that's it for me, you know? I just, uh, I'd given everything I had to the game, and uh, I knew it was time to, to move on. And I just, I felt this overwhelming feeling like uh, I don't know if it was a feeling of failure, I don't know if it's a feeling of regret, I don't know if it's a feeling of, it's just a bunch of emotions and uh, you know, I just knew that my heart just couldn't do it anymore. Particularly when you're ending a career, there's a major life change. It's really hard on people, especially if you have a lot of your identity rolled into it. And as guys, we tend to put a lot of that into our work. Our lives are full of transition. It could happen with a, uh, a divorce. It could happen when children leave home. It can happen when you change careers. And whenever there's loss, there's grief. And grief is incredibly complex. Grief includes sadness, obviously. It includes uh, tiredness, lethargy, fatigue. It includes fear that life will never be a, the same again. It includes isolation and it includes anger. Integrating that awareness into one's life doesn't happen overnight. It could be anywhere from one to three years before life goes on again. My next passion and what I always known was training. I uh, dusted off all my old books. I started studying that. I went to a local gym. I paid the rent for a month. I had probably about four or 500 bucks left in my pocket. By the time I paid for rent, I had about 50 bucks left in the bank. Yep, that's where it was. I moved into my car and, uh, you know, it's, uh, those were challenging times. Right in the back, this is where I used to park the car. My 87 Scirocco. Spent a lot of nights sleeping here. You know, there's lots of nights where it's tough and when you're alone, but once I turn the page, I just focused on that next task, which was gonna be, you know, a strength coach, gonna be an on ice player development guy. That's what my life was gonna be. A lot of times I end up back to right in my car and it's always been my comfort zone. Open road driving, it uh, helped me to clear my mind. Uh, it was my renaissance, my zen. I would just take that time to reflect. 
Some people find moving, traveling, either on a drive or sitting on a train, an airplane is really relaxing. Again, you're kind of nowhere special, but for some people that's really soothing and meditative as well. Right over top, explode, drive, hit, load, push, and then drive out. I just really started off simple. Focus on athletes and making them better. And then the word kind of got out from them and they kind of spread the word and we filled up that gym and then put us in a position to where we are today where um, you know we've opened our own facility and moving into getting other facilities. From day one when I met him I could tell how passionate he was and how driven he was. Uh, I know right away I came in in pretty tough shape that summer and he believed in me right off the hop. Uh, he put faith in me, he brought me back to the player I knew I could be and I had a really good season my first year after training with Daryl. When you come in here he looks at you as a person before an athlete. He, know, he knows he wants to take care of you off the ice before he takes care of you on the ice. I want to tack back to the middle so that when I spin out I can jab the front foot in right away. Quick attack and rip the puck. Okay? I took it personally that Someone's career is in my hands, and their dream is in my hands. And that's so fragile, it's like a baby, it's like a glass. Angle to the middle, angle to the middle, spin, jab! Knowing what I felt, yep. I want to make sure that that person can truly feel the full extent of what their dream feels like. like that. I want to make that dream come true for someone else. I write down a lot. I write, you know, my thoughts. I write down the things that are bothering me. I write down my dreams, aspirations, my goals. Um, I write all this stuff down. A lot of times your thoughts are in your brain and it gets clouded. It gets clouded with the noise from outside. It gets clouded from the noise from inside. It gets clouded from everything that you have to do and deal with. So writing things down uh, helps to, if anything, bring clarity. His journal is with him every single day. He knows that if he keeps writing it down and visualizing it and thinks about it every day, he's gonna accomplish it. What he does with himself he tries to teach his players or the people around him that anything's possible. We know from uh, evidence that it, people that journal do better for themselves than they would if they are, they're not journaling. So it's important to get a book, get a scribbler, get a piece of paper and a pencil and start writing. I'm feeling really crappy today. I'm sad today. So it's beginning to recognize and acknowledge that your internal landscape, the inside of you, is as important or perhaps more important than the world around you. Whatever you did at one point, you know, take time away and just think about what else you enjoyed doing, you know, what other things brought joy to your heart. Woo. I've failed a million times before I was successful, so, and we're still climbing and I'm gonna fail again and again, but uh, you just gotta keep moving forward.